Hello, oh, this is Mad Cat, and uh, this is the beginning of my second week of being at a homeless shelter. And right now I'm in the city square. Uh, you can kind of see uh, this right here, but right above, you can see this big ass clock tower. And you know, looking around this place, anyone else feel like I'm like an Assassin's Creed game? Like I'm Ezio and you know, I'm going to scale the walls. I mean, that's exactly what I'm looking at here. I mean, I know that, you know, those games took place in like Middle Ages Italy, but still like, I want to climb this wall. I wish I could be like Ezio, you know? Anyone remember his last name? Cause it's drawing a blank to me. Hey, let them know I gave you the <clears throat> idea. <laughs> you didn't give me the idea for Assassin's Creed. I said it was Assassin's Creed. You're the one saying, oh, the chest is right up there, and there's a feather over okay. here. I'm talking about the first time we went in. <clears throat> the so first right. time I said it was Assassin's Creed. Oh, yeah, you're right. It is syndicate. like... Syndicate. <laughs> you have to say Syndicate. It's all of them, <laughs> except the first one. Hi. What's going on? Yeah, this is Felipe. <laughs> <laughs> What does he know? He's like Puerto Rican and Native American, so, you know. That's supposed to mean that I know a lot, actually, if you really think It means it. you know a lot about the ground, not about architecture. We the ones who built all of this. It was all <laughs> foreigners that did this shit. <laughs> that's what, apparently, that's what they told me, actually. When you look at all this stuff, um, the game I was playing for the library actually said that um, a lot of immigrants were the responsible for Yeah, well, of course. Cheap I labor. I lie at first until I heard it with my own ears. I was going to say hi. Let, let me get back to the video. Yes. I don't, I'm sure people don't come to my channel for a history lesson. <laughs> Actually, I'm sure yeah, they do. Give them justice. <laughs> All right. So, let me say, they're, being in a shelter is both good and bad. Like, today, um, they were getting my bag down. And they have to put it on the top shelf because that's where my bed number is. Which is strange because I should be on the first floor, so I should be on a lower shelf somewhere. But they don't have any room, and I should be on the first floor because I'm still on crutches. But anyways, the uh, guy, he's like five foot five, and the shelf is like eight feet high. So he has to kind of like jump up and grab my bag and pull it down. And it's caused some damage to my bag, mostly to my laptop, but I can't say anything about that because, well, you know, you know, it's my stuff, I'm responsible for it. But at the same time, I can't take my bag up to my bed with me, you know, which I would prefer, and I'm sure a lot of people would prefer, but it's probably a safety reason. But they were grabbing my bag today and it tagged, snagged a little bit on the um, pole there and they yanked it down and ended up causing a big rip in the side of my bag. Now that bag cost like $50 and it was actually a gift to me from my student, my writing student. So, I mean, it's not just a bag to me, it's also something that was very personal to me because, I mean, she actually raised some money herself to be able to do that just so I'd have a bag with me. So, it kind of hurts a little bit I tried talking to them a little bit about it and they're like, their attitude was, well, we don't have a replacement back for you. And I, you know, I don't want to like be like Felipe here and be like, nigga, you're the ones who messed it up. You're the ones who fix it. You know? Hell fucking yeah. What? I, I would, I, if it was my, the guy made a valid point, but guess what? Who's going to bring something like a laptop upstairs? When you have to bring it with you in the bathroom where you could possibly further damage it, it would be irresponsible of you to do that. Yeah. So the most responsible thing you could do is leave it in the bag for safety. So again, mishandling of something that's not yours makes you the the, the, the man in, in, you know, in charge and responsible. So regardless of what that man said, he made a valid point, but that valid point can only be brought too far depending on where you are. You're at a shelter. Yeah. Okay? This ain't the Holiday Inn where you can bring your laptop. Well, the point of the matter is, is that they should handle our stuff with a lot more respect. And this guy has a step ladder. And for whatever reason, he uses it on the other end of the cage where we keep all of our stuff, but doesn't use it on my end. And, you know, my bag is big, but it's not heavy. <clears throat> so, you know, I do think that he's at fault, but the chaplains, they were like, I kept kind of hinting like, you know, you're responsible for this. And their response is, 
well, we don't have a replacement bag for you. And it's like, I just kind of dropped it right there. You know, I kind of pick and choose my own battles. In all honesty, I can get a sewing kit and try to sew it up. Maybe that'll work, maybe it won't. Worst case scenario, I can just sort of get a trash bag, put my clothes in there to keep things from falling out. Um, so, so that's one of the bad things. And you know, there's a lot of bad and good things. Like I'm still kind of cautious of everyone around me, especially this, uh, that guy right there. You, you see him, I'm cautious of it. <laughs> no, no, he's cool. He's, he's my bro. I mean, <laughs> I, he looks out for me, so I'm thankful for him. And that's probably one good thing I found here is like him. And if it wasn't for him, I'd be in a much more miserable state. So I got lucky finding him as a friend. But probably the next shelter I go to, there won't be a Felipe. There's never gonna be <clears throat> or one even close, like a Philip or a Phil. <laughs> so, you know, so I might have a harder time and I haven't really connected with anyone else because, you know, a lot of it is... A, there's a large percentage of black people here, and I'm not trying to be racist, but a lot of them are like hate white people. So when they see me around, they just kind of keep their distance from me. In fact, the only people who come up to me is other white people, and usually it's just like, hey man, you got a cigarette I can use? Uh, sure, here, you can keep it. So, and that's kind of one of the downsides is, and you know, this is something I've discussed before, is that you know, when it comes to single men, blacks are more likely to be homeless, but not by much. Whites are still just as likely to be homeless by a tiny percentage difference. So, um, <clears throat> but then when it comes to like, no, wait, no. I, I, I know it's about even, let's just say that, but at least here in Philadelphia is predominantly black people. And to be fair, I'm guessing that Philadelphia is predominantly a black city. My friend over here is like, Tss. so I guess that's a that, confirmation that's there. A, yeah, a big hell fucking shit. So that makes sense. But, you know, I'm sure if I go to Detroit, it'll be probably a more even mix of uh, whites and Mexicans. So. Yeah, so <clears throat> the thing is, is that, I mean, I'm happy for the shelter. It's giving me two square meals a day. It's giving me a place to sleep, place to store my stuff, even though they keep mishandling my stuff. So I'm thankful for it, but at the same time, I'd rather be in a hotel. I'd rather be in an apartment. I'd rather be living alone or living with my girlfriend. I mean, this is some scary stuff and it's like, now my bag is damaged. And if I don't treat this right away, it could go from damage to being destroyed. And it doesn't help that they don't really give a shit about my stuff. So it's, <clears throat> it's a mixed bag, but in all honesty, to choose between the two, I'd still stay in my own place. Um, even if I had no food there, I'd still want to stay in my own place because I could figure something out. I mean, the one thing about this shelter is it's also open to anyone who wants to go eat who doesn't have somewhere else they could go eat, but not necessarily stay there. So for my second week here, um, you know, the problem, the other problem is, is I'm just not getting a lot of sleep, although I seem to have got a little bit better sleep tonight, last night, but it just really feels like more of the same thing every day. I go there, sit for prayers. Um, eat, go to bed, wake up, breakfast, and then do something with my day. And it's just like the shelter is just the same thing all the time. So I really have to get out. Now I am going to be working with my ghostwriting job, but today I decided to go check out the Liberty Bell. As I said in one of my videos, I've got to be a tourist. And this is an opportunity because if I leave here, I might not come back to Philadelphia. I've got to see the Liberty Bell. I mean, there's like a dozen reasons why I have to see it. One, it's historical. Two, I've done study on copper. You know, I wrote an entire article on copper and sure enough, Liberty Bell came into that because it's a bronze. Um, 
and then there's all these historical sites. I mean, this is almost like a birth of a nation here. I mean, it pretty much is. I mean, uh, when George Washington became president, he came to Philadelphia for the first White House before moving to Washington, D.C., I think, for a second term. So this, this is an important um, place for politics. So I want to see this place, and I'm a history buff. So, you know, I'm going to be a tourist because, you know what, this also keeps up my morale. And it's important to keep up your morale when you're homeless. And if you get into a rut, you're not going to want to get out of it. And it sounds strange, but it's true. Think about people who are depressed, or if you've been depressed yourself, you know that when you're depressed, really, really depressed, you don't want to get out of it. Even though you would love to get out of it, you don't do anything to get out of it. So you've got to keep your spirits up. And if my spirits involve me walking five miles just to go see a cracked bell, there I go. I'm doing something to keep my spirits up. So um, I still want out of here. I'm still working to get out of here. I'm going to Detroit next month. I'm going to see my girlfriend, but I'll still be on the streets. I'm saving up my money as much as I can, but you know, sometimes the, um, I get hungry throughout the day because what they feed us is like empty calories. It's just to put food in our bodies, but not necessarily something to digest for a long period of time. It just goes like that, so I get food. You know, we get some um, uh, flaming Hot Cheetos, put some cheese on there, jalapenos, chili. Chested cheese hot fries. Chester cheese hot fries. That's what it is. Bomb, it's it. it's still flaming hot. Yes, it's awesome. So it you know it's a lunch that he mostly gets, but sometimes I buy it. We we help each other out with our expenses. But you know, I, I'm trying to save up my money, but sometimes I need to buy stuff when I'm out and about. So you know, I still need help. Any help you can give is appreciated. You can go to my Patreon. Uh, that's patreon.com forward slash mad underscore cat. Uh, even though it says trying to treat my medical condition, which technically it is, it is right now trying to help me get off the streets. Then there is um, GoFundMe. That's another thing trying to help me get off the street. GoFundMe.com forward slash stay off streets. Um, also, you can check out my PayPal if you don't want to do either of those, but want me to get the most amount of money. Whichever one you want to do is fine. That's going to be paypal.me forward slash madcatprime. Now, if you don't want to do any of that, but you still want to help me out, consider buying my book, Character Astrology Profiles. It's only $2.99. Um, I make 70% of that, so it's about $2 right there. But every time someone buys it, it gets me higher in search results. And right now, I'm about to hit the 500000 mark. Uh, for Amazon books. And I might sound a lot, but like when my book first came out, it was nearly 3 millionth place. So 500,000, that's an achievement right there. So, you know, help me get to there, buy my book, so my book will appear higher in search results, so writers needing help can like stumble upon my book at random. And like, oh, oh, this looks like a good book, I'll go and buy it. So it really helps me out. Anyways, this is Mad Cat signing off.